everyone tonight. Uh, this is our first in the series of our uh, summer welcome series for bioengineering. And tonight we're focusing just pretty much on telling you about the department, the school, a little bit of everything. So let's take a look at our schedule. I should introduce myself. Hi, I'm Ben Porter. Um, I am in the bioengineering department. I'm one of the instructional faculty and we'll talk about those later, uh, but I'm also the coordinator for student success within our department. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot and hearing a lot from me. All right, so our schedule. Uh, I'm going to start off by introducing a little bit about the school and how we all fit together. Then we have a, a welcome from our dean. We'll move on and talk about ECS academic advising. Uh, and then we have uh, someone to talk about the Biomedical Engineering Society, the career services here in the Johnson School, uh, our EPICS program, senior design. Then and we'll finish with some more upcoming first year events or, or events that are just geared for everyone in the department that we think would be good for you to know about. So, jumping in, um, let's talk about bioengineering, UT Dallas, and you. So, we are UT Dallas. Uh, we are a part of the UT system, the University of Texas system. The UT system is about 140 years old. Uh, it serves about 243,000 students across eight universities and soon to be seven teaching hospitals. It is one of the nation's largest public university systems in the world and has more than 116,000 faculty, healthcare professionals, researchers, support staff, and student workers. UTD in itself has about or had about 31,500 students last fall. That's across seven different schools. Uh, our newer, newly merged Harry Bass Jr. Uh, School of Arts, Humanities and Technology, School of Behavioral Brain Sciences, Economic Policy, Political and Policy Science, the Eric Johnson School of Engineering and Computer Science, School of Interdisciplinary Studies, Navigil Naveen Jindal School of Management, and our School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. We do also have the Honors College. Um, that counts separate. So we are focusing on the Eric Johnson School. Um, Last year we had about four. Oh, sorry, for UTD we had about four thousand two hundred uh, incoming first year students, uh, and of those, about one hundred and fourteen were in bioengineering. Uh, just to kind of give you a clue on what that's looking like for this year, I emailed about one hundred and forty people just for today. So I think we're doing pretty good. We have a good enrollment this year. Within the Eric Johnson School of Engineering and Computer Science, there are six departments. Uh, bioengineering is, of course, the best, and that's the one we're focusing on. Um, we may get some arguments from some of the other faculty later, uh, but we also have computer science, electrical and computer engineering, material science and engineering, mechanical engineering, and systems engineering. And there's a lot of opportunity to go in between the departments, uh, get some cross collaboration, and, and learn from across the departments too. You do get support from all levels uh, within the UT system, within the system that I've outlined here. So UT system does give support for our students. Um, we get some at the university level, we get some at the school level, and then there's also some at the department level. So it goes throughout. Uh, we're gonna focus primarily on the university, the school, and the department level today. Um, but really one of the things that I wanna emphasize and make sure that everyone knows when they're first coming in is that there is multiple levels of support for all of our students. Um, there's some overlap, but it's a good overlap. So let's look a little bit further at the university. So we have a president, Dr. Richard Richard Benson. He's our fifth, fifth president. Uh, he is from, he has his PhD in mechanical engineering from UC Berkeley. Uh, he's been with UTD since 2016. From the president, it kind of breaks down into two sides, generally speaking. Uh, one side is the academic side and the other is more along the administrative side. There's definitely research in there, but I'm kind of glossing over that for our purposes today. So our academic side is headed by the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost, Dr. Inga Musselman. Um, she oversees basically everything academic. So if it's hiring faculty, if it's helping with curriculum or deciding what curriculum goes, what programs we have, um, she is the top. So. We go to her for, for all of that. Several people report to her, including all the deans. Um, one person I am going to highlight is our dean of the Office of Undergraduate Education, Dr. Murphy. They 
pretty much handle everything that they can do to help um, our students with educational experiences. Um, they help to enhance the diverse and challenging uh, situations to try to make sure that students get good exposure. We're trying to come up with well-rounded, engaged citizens, uh, and the Office of Undergraduate Education helps in that. They also offer a lot of support for our students, so a lot of the peer-led tutoring, uh, a lot of the tutoring period, um, a lot of our transfer programs, um, pretty much anything that will support the educational success of our students, the Office of Undergraduate Education helps with. Someone else to point out who reports to the muscle uh, to the provost who is good for you to know is Jennifer McDowell. She is the university registrar. Uh, I had no idea what a registrar was when I first went to a university. So just briefly explaining it to you, it's the record keeper. Uh, all of your academic records you get from the registrar. So if you're requesting a transcript, if you need to have it uh, so you can get a job or apply to internships or anything like that, it goes to the registrar. Um, they're also the ones who keep all the official records for when you register for a class or if you're dropping a class. So a good person to know, a good office to know. On the flip side of the educational is all the support that we have, um, not for the academics, but the support that we have uh, with the infrastructure. Um, and some of it is supporting our students as well. Um, focusing specifically on the Vice President for Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Gene Fitch. So he oversees multiple aspects of our student experience um, from housing uh, to if it has to be uh, behavioral adjustments or for those issues with there. Um, lots and lots of different areas. He also supports a lot of our, our student groups. So student groups all under, fall under him. We have over 400 student groups on campus. Um, a lot of the. Sorry, I'm losing the words. Um, Basically, a, a pretty much anything that helps to support the students, not necessarily academically, but physically while you're on campus. So the, the student health and wellness, um, our uh, sports, um, the gyms, everything like that, report to the president, uh, to Gene Fitch. Another person I wanted to point out under him really quick uh, is Cheryl Frizenhan. She is the Senior Director of Financial Services in the Office of the Bursar. Officer the Bursar is the person who all the tuition goes to and all the financial aid. So it's another one of the, those names that you're going to become familiar with. Within the school, within the school, of the Eric Johnson School of Computer Science and Engineering, which we call ECS because it's a mouthful otherwise, uh, we have Dean Stephanie Adams. Similarly to uh, the way that it work breaks on for the president, um, the dean oversees the academics and everything that supports that as well as the research. So you can think of the dean almost as the principal of a high school. Um, so she oversees everything within her school. Helping her and supporting her on the academics is our associate dean for undergraduate education, Dr. Amy Walker, who will be talking with us a little bit later. Um, she oversees the academic advising. She does a lot with all the policy for how things happen. If you need a grade appeal or anything along those lines, um, she works with all of that. Under her, someone that you might uh, run into would be the Assistant Dean for Student Success, Dr. Stephen Krines. So similar to um, what the Office of Undergraduate Education does with supporting our students, making sure that they are set up for success, he does the same thing, but for ECS specifically. And then all of our department heads also report to the Dean. So our department head is Dr. Shalini Prasad. Uh, she was unable to come today because she's out traveling. You'll meet her next time. Um, and she'll give us some words of wisdom. She's if the dean is the principal of the school, um, Dr. Prasad is like the principal of a smaller school. I'm not sure if that's a great description, but she she basically oversees the entire department. She works a lot with the faculty. Um, and speaking of faculty, let's talk a little bit about the difference between two of the main types of faculty that we have within the department. There are instructional faculty and tenure system faculty, and I know this seems like a lot, um, but it's to help clear up some confusion later on when you start meeting your teachers. So your instructional faculty, their main job is to teach. Um, so that's I'm instructional faculty. I teach. That's all I do. Tenure system faculty also do research, so they're split between doing their research and teaching. They have to teach less courses than instructional faculty, but they also have to maintain labs. 
um, publish papers, get grants, that sort of thing. So they do a lot more with research. Within our instructional faculty, um, our assistant department head of undergraduate education for bioengineering is Dr. Tariq Ali. He will also be joining us next time. He is he basically oversees when we ever try to do a curriculum change or if we're trying to make sure our curriculum is up to date, which we're constantly checking to make sure our curriculum is up to date. If we're trying to see if we need to add classes or take away classes, he heads up the committee that does a lot of that. Um, he's also one of the first people that you would go to as an undergraduate if you are having problems with the class. So he is a fantastic resource to meet. Um, he is instructional faculty. You would probably meet him in your second and third year uh, while you're here. Um, and like I said, we will have him next time. I will touch a little bit more on the research and then we'll move on and I'll stop talking so somebody else can. Um, we have six main areas of research within our bioengineering department. Bioimaging, biomaterials, biomechanics, biosensors and electronics, neural engineering, systems biology. There's a lot more in bioengineering than just these six areas. Uh, and we will talk about this in our third session uh, for this summer the, of our, our welcome series. Um, but just be thinking about this. If you th if you want to go into doing research, and we are as a department are very supportive of students doing research in labs, you can start looking at these areas on our website, start seeing what was included in those, what labs are included in those, uh, and start thinking about who might be an interesting person to work with. Um, and I will give you another tip really quick because this tends to confuse a lot of our first year students when they first come in. What do you call your teachers? We have people who have doctorates and usually you call them or PhDs. Usually they're called doctor. So that's why we have Dr. Lali, Dr. Prasad. Um, sometimes we have faculty members who don't have a PhD. So the safest thing to do is to call your teacher professor. So Professor Porter, Professor Ali, it's always a good default. So in case you're trying to fall back on one, there you go. OK. That was my very, very quick introduction to how the school and the university work as a system. Um, we'll move on to more interesting things now and to that make this an actual welcome. So we do have a welcome from our dean. This is Dean Adams. Uh, unfortunately, she was not able to be here, but she did make a video specifically for us. So I'm going to play that for you. And if you all could, if you can hear this, just give me a quick thumbs up and I know we'll be good. Awesome, thank you. Greetings, Comets. My name is Stephanie Adams, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Dean of the Eric Johnson School of Engineering and Computer Science. I also happen to be a professor of systems engineering, and I hold the Lars Magnus Erickson Chair. You and I are kindred spirits in that biomedical engineering is what inspired me to become an engineer. I'm very excited that you've chosen to pursue your path here in our bioengineering program. In high school, you are taught, but in college, you must learn. And how you learn may be different from your classmate. A big aspect of engineering is continuous improvement. I encourage you after your first or second semester to evaluate how efficient you were in taking notes, preparing for tests, completing your homework, and then seek help in the area in which you want to improve. The university is invested in your success, but you have to tell us what areas you need help. The earlier you can get an internship, the better for you to understand the types of career paths you may want to pursue. I had the pleasure of serving as an intern at the 3M Corporation the summer after my freshman year. I learned so much in that experience. I got to do really cool things, and I worked with 3M all during my undergraduate degree, as well as my master's degree. Sometimes freshmen or transfer students say that they can't get a job because they don't have a lot of experience. In that case, reach out to your professors to conduct research in their lab. And before you know it, you've gained experience that can help you land an internship or a pathway to medical school. Pursuing internships and research, please have some fun. Go to Welcome Week activities held near the student union and on the mall that are sponsored by the university. Then also go to Welcome Week activities sponsored by the Johnson School, where you'll grab some free food and learn about the many engineering student organizations that you can join. These are the best years of your life. My best friends I met in college. You'll never have the freedom, flexibility, and opportunity 
to meet as many people as you do now. So please enjoy the moments. Now, there may come a time when you encounter a challenge and need some help. Your first stop is always going to be your academic advisor, followed by the Office of Undergraduate Education. From study tips to resume writing to learning university resources to help you navigate bigger life and personal challenges, they are a one-stop shop to help you as bioengineering students become successful. Their office is located in the South Engineering and Computer Science Building that we call ECS South. As Dean, my job is to make sure that you have a wonderful experience here, and I trust that you will. Study hard, but play hard. Go Comets and woo. All right. So that is Dean Adams. She packed it. Whoops, sorry. I can operate technology. Uh, she packed a lot of great information and great advice in there. Uh, we hope that we will, we will dive into a lot more of those details um, when it comes to our academic boot camp in August, which I'll talk about a little bit further when we get there towards the end of uh, our session here. Um, but she also gave us a great segue into speaking with uh, Dr. Amy Walker. So Dr. Walker is with ECS Academic Advising. She is more than just that. Uh, sorry, that's a terrible introduction. She is our Associate Dean of Undergraduate Education, uh, and I'm going to pass it over to you so I can stop talking. So thank you, Dr. Walker, for joining us. Oh, no, thank you, Dr. Florida. Um, yes, so it is a bit of an odd name because it sounds like I only we only look after uh, just the educational aspects of, of your uh, environment. But actually, I look after all of the things that you do as an undergraduate student in ECS. Um, so that's everything from academic advising, which I'll touch on a little bit more in a minute, um, student organizations. And I know that I think coming up soon, you'll have a little introduction to the BMAS uh, organization. We actually have over 40 student organizations uh, just housed in ECS, everything from the Society for Women Engineers, BMAS, uh, NISB, National Society of Black Engineering, you name it, we've got it. So, um, and we're a very active group for student organizations. Um, you will hear a little bit later, you've got a great lineup, Dr. Porter, because you'll hear a little bit later from Lacey Henderson, who is our Director of Career Services and Professional Development, about all of the different activities that we do to help you prepare for your engineering career. Because remember, when you get a bachelor's degree in bioengineering or any engineering degree, you are a professional at the end of your degree. So it's really important to get ready for that degree and for that uh, professional environment. Um, I also oversee scholarships um, that uh, are awarded meritoriously so you actually have to apply for them um and uh finally um i do want to point out that we also have an ecs student council and that council is the voice of the students um representing to people like me faculty staff to help improve your environment um so i will say one thing we support you all a lot um and we really want you to be successful. So don't be quiet. Take part in all of the organizations, student council, go to every single one of our uh, events like Weeks of Welcome. You'll make a lot of great friends and you'll also develop that professional network that you need to be successful later on in life. And I can happily say, and I think Dr. Porter can say that he, that you meet people in school that become your incredible network for the rest of your life. So let me talk a little bit about um, academic advising. Academic advising is a bit of a misnomer because it sounds like it's just about classes and registration. And in some ways, that's a major part of the advising team's job. But we're also the really one of the first places you can go to when you've got a question or a problem or you're not quite sure what's going on. So for example, how do I do undergraduate research? I know you'll hear a little bit more about that from this series, but we actually, uh, advisors can actually help you figure out what's the best approach. Or I'm a pre-med student. 
how do I work out what classes I need to take? Because there are some extra classes, right? Go to your academic advisor or help. My car's just been broken into. We will help you figure out how to work with UTD police, whatever. You name it, my advisors will help you no matter what. So our advising office is on the ground floor of ECS South. Um, we are there Monday through Friday in person, um, but we're always available um, on email. Um, so, and also on Teams, in person, you name it, we will, we, we're happy to help. So um, I look forward to seeing you in the weeks of welcome events. Um, welcome to UTD. I cannot do the comment whoosh, I'm terrible. Dean Adams does it much better than I do, but welcome anyway, and thank you. Thank you very much. And I think I absolutely agree with you about the connections that you make in college lasting a lifetime. Uh, some of your best friends will come from from your times here as an undergraduate, but also some of your best connections that you will use professionally throughout your life. So um, all great points. Thank you very much. Our next person, see if I can go back to sharing here. Is on Yeti Olulu. He will be speaking with us about uh, the Biomedical Engineering Society here on campus, our, our local chapter. Um, on Yeti, are you? I saw you. There you go. Uh, can you see me all right? Yes, perfect. Let me stop sharing so we can go back to you. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, as Dr. Porter said, my name is Onyeti Lolo. Um, I'm entering my fourth year of undergraduate in biomedical engineering, and I am the president of the Biomedical Engineering Society. Um, I think as as Dr. Walker was saying, joining a student organization and building those connections are super important um, as a student, not only for your academic and social lives, but also for your professional lives. Um, some of the, there has been some tough classes that I would that I would have struggled getting a good grade in if it wasn't for the people that I met in BMES and some of the other resources that we offer. So I'll tell you guys about some of that. Um, we offer um, tutoring uh, for for BMA specific classes. As you guys know, we do have a tutoring center here on campus, but sadly they can't they can't have a tutor for every single class. So we're there to fill in the gap. Um, we also host um, job fairs and we hope to host a research fair. So uh, we we hope we hope you guys connect with other professionals in the biomedical engineering industry. Um, ton, I know I know a ton of people who have gotten internships and jobs through some of the um, job fairs that we hold in collaboration with the bioengineering department. Um, we also hold tons of workshops for both um, for both your degree plan, your classes and for like resumes and to help. So to help you build your professional profile. And on top of, you know, all the all the more professional stuff. We also host socials. Um, we have like, uh, for example, last year we had a Halloween party. We had a boba party. We also have um, some a week of welcome event in the plans. Um, it's a great way to meet people. We have our meetings every single month. Um, just we have two meetings in the same week a month. Just in case you can't make it on one day, you can make it on the other day. Um, and I believe, let me double check, our first meeting of the year. If you guys want to go ahead and write this down, <laughs> will be um, August 28th and August 29th. So our meetings will be the, la the last Monday and Tuesday every single month, and you guys can um, join, of course, either one. Um, we also help people join research labs as well. So if you're coming into UTD and you're interested in joining a research lab, as Dr. Walker said as well, that is one of the best ways to gain professional experience without having to, you know, go out and apply for a job. We'll help connect you to those professors, to those research labs. So we'll be hosting lab tours where you'll get like a little bit of experience so you can kind of peer into their world. Um, as I said, it's a I'm a big proponent of student organizations here at UT Dallas. Um, I'm not only president of BMES, I'm also president of the African Student Union, and I'm also a member of the National Society of Black Engineers, which is also a great um, organization under ECS. So make sure you guys get out there, find where you fit, and you know make some friends and make some connections. Oh, and oh, 
I'll also add um, the links for our for the Biomedical Engineering Society's group me and our Instagram in the chat so you guys can stay updated with everything we do. Awesome. Thank you, Yeti. And they can start with that now. You don't need to wait until school starts to start following. And student organizations are one of those things you can just jump feet first into and get going. Um, and BMES is, you want to be careful not to go into too many, um, but BMES is a great one to get started and for sure. Uh, so Emma was asking, what time are the meetings? Do you have a time yet for those? Yes. So the meetings, I believe, will be at um, either 6.30 or 7 o'clock right now yes they're going to be they're going to be for both days they're going to be towards the evening but of course if you can't make it we'll always share the slides and the information um that we have that meeting via our bmes group chat or via email but um it's also important for you to come to the meeting you know just to you can see me in person you can see um all, all your fellow students in person as well and um for that first meeting we, we are looking to recruit one freshman as an officer. So if you guys are interested in jumping right into being um, being a leader in our organization, in our community, right off the bat, then make sure you come to that first meeting and learn all about it. Excellent. All right. Um, and I will say, when Eddie brings up a great point, start checking your emails. Always make sure you're checking your emails. It's a daily thing, not a weekly thing. Um, cause you do, you will get a lot of communications in your UTD email. Um, a lot of them are about these events. It's, it's kind of easy to miss them if you're not checking. Um, so great. Thank you so much, John Nitti. All right, next up, go back to sharing. We have Megan Tadora with the Johnson School of Career Services and Professional Development. Every yes. time I share my screen, it shrinks that. OK, there we go. Hey, Megan. Hi. <laughs> so if you would like, just tell me when and I can advance the slides for you. Sounds good. OK, we can go ahead and get started then. There we go. So I'm Megan Tadora. I'm standing in for our director, Lacey Henderson, uh, and I am a career coach for Johnson Career Services and Professional Development. We also have Jamie here if you want to turn on your camera real quick so they can kind of see your face. She's another one of our career coaches. Um, so we'll both be here to kind of answer questions in the chat if you have any. Um, OK, and we can kind of move to the next slide. So if you want to scan this QR code, it's going to take you to our website so you can get more of an overview of all of our services. Our mission is to provide and promote quality professional programs and resources that develop the essential skills students need to compete in the job market. And we can go into the next slide. So there are three stages to student career readiness. In the first stage, you're going to be exploring careers. In the second stage, you're developing your brand and your professional identity. And in the third stage, you're going to be ready for hire. And we'll talk in the next slide a little bit about some of those steps that go into those three stages. So these are the things that we can help you with at in our or through our career services. Um, assessing yourself, identifying your strengths and weaknesses, exploring careers or using job search tools and techniques, branding yourself, putting yourself onto paper, um, as well as maybe locking down an internship, learning the art of articulation and developing your confidence, building and developing your network, and then developing professionally so that once you do get the job, you're able to grow within the company and continue to establish business etiquette skills. And we can go to the next slide. So like our previous pre presenters have all been saying, I highly encourage you to get involved with student organizations. We have over 40 just for ECS. Um, if you scan that QR code, it's going to take you to our website where you'll be able to find the full list of organizations. Um, and it is really and truly a great way to network. So if you haven't already started considering it, I highly encourage you to join at least one organization, if not more. And we can go into our next slide where you're going to see a list of the top employers that hire our students and employers love our students as they should. You guys are great. Um, so here at UTD, you're learning the knowledge and the skills that you're going to need to thrive in a professional career. Um, and our career services are going to be a really great resource to you as you learn how to apply that knowledge and those skills. Um, and we can help you to really sell yourself to those employers, employers like these. Um, and 
So in our next slide, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the internship courses that ECS has to offer for you. Uh, so your steps are going to be once you've locked down an internship, you're going to get an offer letter from your employer and then you'll complete the internship application online and upload that offer letter. And then on our end, we're going to verify that offer and any documentation and we're going to enroll you in an internship course. Um, and then on our next slide, I can tell you a little bit more about that. So uh, we have undergraduate level courses and we also have a graduate level course. In those undergraduate level courses, um, you can earn up to three credit hours and it is a pass or fail. You're going to be required to submit a work report at the end of the semester. Um, so yeah, an internship, excuse me, an internship is a really great way to start getting that experience, that real world experience and something to put on your resume. So it's a really great way to establish, establish yourself amongst employers. Um, and then moving on. These are our contact. This is all of our contact info. I've got Lacey Henderson on there, our director, like I said, and then me and Jamie, your career coaches there to help you with the details of um, your doc, your professional documents and mock interviews, technical resumes, anything like that. Um, and then there's also Mary Ann who can help for any international students who may have CPT questions. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're going to stick around in the chat if you have any questions, but also we have a QR code up on this slide. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, we can offer you any more information. So thank you guys and welcome to UTD. Great, thank you. And I know some of you may be thinking, oh my gosh, I just started. Well, I haven't even started college yet, and you're already trying to get me to think about jobs. Um, it's not too early. It is most definitely not too early. You need to start in your first year actually coming up with plans. And we'll go into this a lot more with the academic boot camp, and you'll hear this a lot more from our advisors. Um, so it's not too early. It's something you want to start planning on now. Um, and they are great at it. We also do have a UTD career advising. So we have two different groups. Um, they both offer great resources. ECS is more specific to our students uh, in bioengineering and in engineering and computer science. Um, but both have great resources. We're a little bit more biased towards Megan and Jamie, but you know. <laughs> Um, any questions? Uh, actually, now's a good time to pause and take questions. Are there any questions? I had saw a hand earlier, but I wasn't sure if that was a question or a response to me asking if you could hear me. You can type it in the chat, or if you want to unmute yourself here, you can do that really quick, or we can move on. Okay. Not seeing any, we'll go ahead and move on. And if there are any questions, we can take some at the end. Um, our next speaker is Andrea Tercati. Uh, she is with the EPIX program. And I will let her explain about EPIX because it's cool and I can't do it justice. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome all first year bioengineering students to the Johnson School. My name is Andrea Turcati, and I work for the School of Engineering and Computer Science, coordinating a very cool program called EPICS. And I'm here today to introduce very briefly this program to all of you. So what is EPICS? Um, EPICS allows students to work on real uh, world problems while helping the community. That means that we partner with nonprofit organizations that have a technical need. Most of the time, this nonprofit organization do not have either the money to pay somebody to solve that a particular issue, or they do not have the knowledge to do it by themselves. So we provide them with a team of our UTD students to work toward a solution for that particular problem that will allow the nonprofit to serve their clients uh, better. So for our students, this means researching the problem, designing, building, and delivering a final product to the nonprofit organization. The program is open to all our students, so you can start working on a hands-on real-world problem as soon as you are a freshman student. Uh, so how do you participate in EPICS? 
EPICS is a class, so students must enroll in, in the class to work on projects that are proposed by this nonprofit organization, the community. The class is EPCS 2200 and is offered as a two credit hour free elective class. Uh, in that class, students learn the human center design process where they design and solve a problem having the client in mind, learning to empathize with them to get the best solution for the particular problem they are working on. So EPICS allows our students to apply concepts they learn in other classes and to learn many skills by working on a hands-on uh, project. So this past semester, we had 23 different projects that our students worked on during the past semester. And I'm going to give you just one example of the kind of projects they work on. We work with the Autism Treatment Center, and this um, organization tasks our uh, students to design a product to assist individuals with autism to calm them down when they experience that sensory overload that many times um, they have. So they were given, uh, at the same time, they were given other constraints that uh, the students have to have in mind when designing this device, such as it has to be a comfortable device, durable, washable, and it has to have an ample range of motion. So our students de develop um, a device that acts pretty much as a pressure cuff that can be worn on the individual upper arm, and the cuff is inflated and deflated by an air compressor that is mounted on that calf. And it is controlled by an app that could be managed either by the parents of the person wearing the device or the professionals that are working with um, the individuals. For this particular project, we have always have a multidisciplinary team working on, on the project. And that means that very early on, you are exposed to work, uh, um, to work on a project with people from other disciplines. And in this particular, we have people from bioengineering, computer, uh, computer engineering, electrical engineering, and even computer science students. So this is a great experience when you are able to work on a team um, like that. Um, so we do have, as I said, many other projects. I invite you to visit our website, epics.utdallas.edu, and you will be able to learn about all the different projects we our students are working on. Our students have to maintain for each project a website, so there is plenty of information about the description of the project, the nonprofit that they are serving, plus the different progress they are making month by month. Um, so we hope that you consider to enroll in this class at some point while you are here at UTD. Again, the class EPCS 2200, you can enroll yourself or you can talk and I um, encourage you to talk to your advisor if you need to get more information about the program. Excellent. Thank you. And I served as the judge for many of the UT design or sorry, not UT design for the EPICS programs uh, last year and they were fantastic. Um, I loved seeing them. I loved hearing about them from the students, uh, and it's a great way to get some hands-on experience with with engineering and engineering design. Um, you'll find out that as you are going through your academic career, you need to get some of those projects under your belt so you can put them on your resume. Um, this is a good one for it, so I fully encourage all of you to go check out Epics, uh, and I know the students who have been in it have enjoyed it. Um, so thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you. All right, we do have a question that I saw pop up. Uh, so the research interest fair that happens in the spring semester, should you as freshmen attend or apply? Um, or do I advise that you get a bit more college experience and apply in the sophomore year? I think because it's in the spring that it's OK to apply then. Uh, you as first year students, uh, you can enter into research in your first semester. But that tends to be really challenging. It's a transition year. It's a time that you're starting to get used to college and you're trying to get used to all the new time commitments. So taking on too much in that first semester can be kind of detrimental to you. But by the spring semester, you kind of know your stride. You know how you're getting around, what you're doing. 
Um, so I think it's totally okay to go to the career or sorry, the, the research fair in the spring or to even start talking to faculty outside of the research fair. Uh, and we will talk about that in, in future meetings, but I think it's one that you can definitely do in the spring for sure. Yes. And then we had another question. Can people outside of engineering school do epics? Uh, which Andre already answered. Yes, yes, they can. So good. OK, I think that catches this up on the questions. So we'll go into our next speaker. Which is Dr. Todd Polk. He is with our UT design and capstone project. Um, so welcome, Dr. Polk. Thank you, Dr. Porter. And hello, new comments. Very nice to meet all of you. You uh, don't don't get too used to my face. You're not going to see it again for three years um, when you get to be seniors. And then we're going to put you through the ringer and teach you how to be a real engineer. So when you get a job, you'll be a step ahead of uh, graduates from other schools, which is a lot of the feedback that we hear. So um, before I dive into senior design, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. One, Andrea did not mention, which surprised me, that we also through UT design and epics and and this capstone program, we run a what we call Comets Create a couple times a year, where it's a 24 hour kind of engineering hackathon that you can sign up for. You know, every one of them has kind of a mission or an idea or focus of what we want you to work on, but it's a great way to uh, practice some of the engineering skills for real that you can learn in epics while you're going through your first three years of university. And then of course, when you get to senior design, you'll um, you'll be ready to roll. We do also have a junior design course, which Dr. Porter, I don't know if you talked about that at all, but we do actually for biomedical have a junior design course, which is one semester long to kind of get you even more prepared to be ready for the two semester long senior design experience that you'll do your last year of undergraduate here. Um, so a couple of things, basically, like I said, you know, that light at the tunnel that you're not sure if it's a train or not. So by the time you're a senior, you're pretty sure it's not a train and it's actually the light at the end of the tunnel for you. So that's when you're going to get to come and, and, and hang out with me and work on senior design. So for biomedical engineering, we actually partner with mechanical engineering. Um, a lot of our projects tend to be um, biomechanical in nature, so we do have a lot of cross-disciplinary teams. So a lot of the things that Andrea spoke about with EPICS and getting you primed and ready and used to working with people outside of biomedical engineering is great experience for you. So please uh, you know, take advantage of that if you have room in your schedule. Um, the other thing that a few people have mentioned is undergraduate research, and I cannot, um, I cannot strongly enough recommend that you go look into labs that are in areas of that you're interested in, and see if you can work as an undergraduate in research in some labs. It is fantastic experience. You're going to get your hands on real tools to do real things with the supervising professors there in those labs that are trying to get some research work done. It's a great way to help prepare you and to build your knowledge. Um, I also can't uh, stress enough, go get your hands on every piece of technology you can. So, you know, learn programming, go learn how to work with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and all the things that in junior design and senior design, you're gonna be expected to know how to use when you walk in the door. So take advantage of the resources that are available there from BMES and IEEE, uh, and go go get your hands busy and try things out. I can't encourage you enough to do that. Um, I can tell you I love it when you walk into senior design and you're prepared and already know those things. So that way you don't have to go learn them on your own in addition to trying to complete your project. So um, focusing particularly on senior design or capstone or UT design, the program name, uh, we set up very much like a company. So we treat you like an engineer from day one. Um, and we expect you to work like and act like an engineer. Um, so everything we do is industry based. You won't hear us talk about classes. We'll talk about training. You're not students. You'll be engineers. You don't have homework assignments. You have project deliverables. So you're going to get introduced and embedded into the language of industry and the functionality and the workflow of industry, um, which we have found with our graduates is a great way to help you get jobs. Um, our students come out far more prepared than they do from a lot of other programs, and we've got I could tell you stories all day long, but I'll save them for when you get to senior design and tell you about them then. But just trust me, it's it's going to be an experience that you're going to you're going to hate going through it at first. About a year out of college after you graduate, you're going to be emailing me telling me thank you, um, which is perfect with me because um, it's going to be such a great leg up that you're going to have on students and other disciplines and from other universities. So so we look forward to uh, seeing you get here. 
Uh, biomed, as I'm sure Dr. Parler has told you, is a difficult major. There's a lot of difficult majors. Anything in engineering is difficult, but obviously y'all are in the right place to be successful and you've got to write the team around you to help you be successful with with uh, advisors like Dr. Porter to help you get going your freshman year. So I look forward to seeing you all in three years. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, you certainly you can reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions um, at any point in time. I've I lived in industry for 30 years before I came back to teach. So I've got a lot of industry experience to bring. So when we talk about how things are in industry, we're not just making it up or haven't read a book. We've actually lived it over here in senior design. So so we're going to be a great resource for you. And we look forward to meeting you when you get to that point. So good luck in your first three years and uh, come in ready and prepared. And we'll have a good time working with customers on real projects. Thanks. I will say they actually do have a good time. I've supervised four or five teams of undergraduates yeah. now, mm -hmm. and they, despite it being challenging for sure, uh, they do enjoy it. Um, yeah. Students do enjoy both semesters as I've, as I've coached them through with my particular teams. Yeah. Um, and it's a love-hate relationship with Dr. Polk. <laughs> more, lo more love than hate. I, more I, love, I like definitely more love, definitely more love. <laughs> um, and I think yeah, another he, point that uh, um, most everybody has made now, and Dr. Polk definitely emphasized on this one, is the degree is not going to be enough. Um, and that's not to say that to discourage you. Um, that is no matter what school you go to, no matter what degree you get, um, you need to start thinking about getting some of these outside experiences. They are not just options. They are things that you need to do in order to be able to get a good job. Um, so the degree is not enough. We're trying to present with you all the different things that you can do to start expanding those skills. Um, so you can go and study Arduino on your own. You can go get your own 3D printer and start making things. Uh, there's lots of things you can do to start building those skills. And we'll talk about those further throughout the, this series. Um, and we're actually going to have Dr. Polk with us at the, the next talk uh, where he's going to give some advice on getting ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that Megan mentioned when talking about building your personal brand and preparing you for working in teams and all are things that we highly stress and focus on here as well. So I put the link for the UT Design website in the chat for y'all. Um, you know, if you're if you're anxious and interested enough, you can follow us on social media. We've got Instagram and Twitter and I don't know what I don't know if we have a TikTok account yet. I don't <laughs> think we've got, got quite gotten that hip on the uh, instructor side, but we do have Instagram and Twitter for sure. that you can take a look at um, and see some of the previous projects that have gone through. You can look at them there on the website, too, and look at all the previous projects. So they're large, they're long term, uh, but our customers love it. And we've had several things that have resulted in patents that students, you know, get their names on patents for having done the work, which is really cool. So we'll, yeah, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys. go on to get jobs with their companies they worked with too. Yeah, definitely so. It's, definitely so. It's, it's great. Yeah. Good experience. Yeah. All right. All right Thank everybody. you. Thank you. Take care. You too. All right. And now you get to listen to me talk a little bit more. I won't talk nearly as much as I did at the beginning. Um, let's see if I can get you all back up. There we go. Okay. So a little bit more on first year events. Um, first year events are typically covered a lot by myself uh, and Dr. Meyer. Um, she was not able to join us today. She's out on vacation, which I can't blame her. It's the summer. Um, but you'll also meet her in your ECL, not ECLS, your Beeman 1100 classes. So those are taught by her and me. Um, so you'll be hearing a lot from us. Um, but some of the upcoming plan, upcoming events that you should make note of. So July 26th, that is our next virtual uh, meeting that we have in the Summer Welcome Series. It'll be the same time, um, setting students up for success. So we'll meet our department head. She'll offer some advice. Um, and then we will have two panels of speakers, uh, one panel of faculty members and one panel of former and current students. They're all going to talk about different ways that you set yourself up for success, whether that be in your first year here at UTD, uh, throughout your academic career and preparing yourself for your, your final year and your capstone project, uh, or preparing yourself now for life beyond graduation, because it is most definitely not too early to start that preparation. So you'll get all sorts of tips and, and advice on how to get things going there. So that will be a good one. Uh, August 9th, we will be doing a little bit of exploration into what exactly is biomedical engineering. Um, I didn't really distinguish between the two. Uh, we are the Department of Bioengineering, but our degree is Biomedical Engineering. 
Uh, and just to give you a little bit of a taste on the distinction there, bioengineering is pretty broad. That can be growing algae for fuel. We don't do that. We focus on the biomedical aspect of things. So don't be confused by our department being bioengineering and the degree being biomedical engineering. We focus on biomedical engineering. So August 9th, we'll explore that. And we're also going to explore some of the many different jobs that you can get as a biomedical engineer. There's a lot more to it than just R&D, just the research and design. Um, so that will be a good one too. It'll help to give you some ideas now on what you can be looking for in the future and what kind of jobs you can be looking forward to. August 18th, that is the Friday before, before school starts. That is our bioengineering academic boot camp. So that will be in person. It is a... Ooh, I forgot, five or six hour long event uh, where we cover a lot of the basic skills that we expect students to come up, come in with, but you don't always necessarily know. Um, so we'll talk about how do you set up a study plan? How do you study for a test? How do you review a test once you've taken it and maybe didn't get the score that you were hoping for? How do you start planning and meeting faculty now? Um, how do you start planning for that career trajectory that we're talking about where you're supposed to start preparing in that first year? So we will go over a lot of different things then. We'll have a lot of different guest speakers with us, uh, some of which will be students. Um, we'll also have free food uh, and some swag to give away. So that'll be a good event to come to. Uh, fully encourage everyone to come to that one. Um, and we will have room for everyone, so don't worry about that. We would like you to register ahead of time for that, though, uh, which is the QR code that is up there. If you are interested and you know that you are already going to be available, then go ahead and sign up for it. Uh, we're not shutting down the registration anytime soon, though, so don't feel like you have to do it right now. On September 22nd, we will have the Bioengineering Career Fair. So there is the ECS Career Fair, and I believe that is the week before. Is that right, Megan? Uh, earlier in September, I think it's the week before. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So the ECS career fair will be good. Uh, it tends to be bigger than the bioengineering. They have a lot more companies. Um, but we also have a, a career fair just for the bioengineering department that focuses on companies that are usually just looking for biomedical engineers. Um, but they're not really looking necessarily for electrical or mechanical. They really are really focusing on the biomedical. So we will have um, that on September 22nd. It is not too soon for uh, first years to start thinking about going to those. Even I, you're way off from looking for a job, but you want to start going and talking with people. You want to start getting used to talking with people. You want to hear what their companies are doing. You want to get those ideas and the sorts of experiences that you should be getting. Uh, the career fairs are a great place for that. On October 21st, it's family day at the university. Bioengineering will be participating in that. Uh, so we encourage families to come uh, and we'll we'll have a good time with that. And we have many more activities, so we're, we're still working on our planning, uh, but you can look forward to companies coming and visiting. So doing some industry visits to give you some more ideas about those careers that are out there, some more of those companies that are out there. Um, we do have some fun things with the department, too. We always do a Halloween competition uh, and a holiday get together around the end of the semester. Um, we have something called a faculty three minute thesis competition, which we love for our students to come and support. And we'll have a couple of workshops, too. So it will be a, a packed semester. It will be a fun semester. Um, we're here to help you, though. That's our, one of the other main things is you have a lot of people here to support you and to make sure that you're successful. Um, with that, I am the last one to wrap it up. So. We do have this QR code, and I'm going to put a link to this in the chat. Let us know how this event went. We are always interested in trying to improve. Uh, these events are for you, so we want to make sure that they're useful. So give us feedback. Let us know if there's different things that we should be doing, different topics that you would like covered that you don't think are going to be coming up, um, anything like that. Thank you for putting that in there, Jamie, on the, the ECS Career Fair September 12th. That is another good one for you to attend as well. Um, we do have five minutes left, so we can take a few questions. If anybody would like to raise your hand or turn on your mic or just type in the chat and we're here for you. So any questions?
see people sneaking out in the back there as the participants go down. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hang around for the next uh, until at least eight o'clock. So if there are questions, feel free to ask, but that'll, that'll bring us to an end for tonight. Um, so thank you for everyone for joining us. Uh, I do hope we'll see you on the 26th. Have a great rest of your week. Stay cool. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.